Hello! Welcome to Zim Capture, number eight, I believe. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and Zim at zimjs.com is an open source library for making interactive media on the HTML canvas using JavaScript and CreateJS. Let's take a look at the Zim site now, zimjs.com. And what we're going to look at today is down on the right hand side is uh, some example code. Okay, for this little happy face that as we drag it along, if it's no longer on the Zim logo, it's sad, look, sad. And then when it touches the logo, it's happy. And when I let go, it goes all wiggly. Okay, so that's the interactive example that I'd like to go through. There is an introduction to the Zim code just underneath if you expand that, and then indeed the code for all of that is sitting here. But rather than look through it, uh, the code on the site, I'd like to uh, open that up in Atom. So I'm just going to close this down. And here's the Atom version. The Atom version I've adjusted slightly. Let me just pull it up in a browser. Browser, browser, browser. Here's uh, the Atom version of the example. So the same thing. I've just sort of simplified it into this, this one area here. Now, we are using ZimFrame in both cases to load this. And we did a capture on ZimFrame, so I won't take you through that again. But this is ZimFrame that fits within a tag. So in this HTML, we've got an article. That's this outer box. We've got a title div, and we've got the div that is going to hold the canvas. So this ZimFrame is targeting that HTML tag. And you'll note that that HTML tag is 60%, and it's stretching in there. And let's see how that was done then. So if we take a look in the code, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and take a look at that HTML. So in our body here, we had an article, or we have an article, a title, and a div with an ID of drag example. So our frame is going to target that div. Let's see how this is all styled. So scrolling all the way up. Here's the styling. The article itself is, it's got a margin. That's a little wide out there. Position, let's just enter there. Uh, position relative width 60%. So there's a width 60% on the outer article. The drag example tag right here, drag example, has a height of 100 pixels. So that's hard coded to 100 pixels high. It doesn't have to be, but there it is. And a margin. And then the canvas itself, drag canvas, it has a background color of the blue. That's what that's getting. So we've seen the drag example, but we don't know yet where the drag canvas ID came from. And so let's go see how, how that is made. First of all, because we are targeting a tag in HTML, we have to wait until all of the DOM content is loaded. So here's a window. This is a JavaScript event. Window.addEventListener, DOM content loaded, and we run this function. Okay, that could also be loaded, you get away with, but DOM content loaded is slightly better. Then we have the Zim framework, and the Zim framework, uh, in this case, this example was put in place along with another canvas. So there were a few things that were done just to help those both those canvases exist together. Uh, I've since sort of helped that along even more, but let, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got a Zim frame, and we're saying, hey, target the drag example ID or tag. Okay, so if this is not fit full or any of these ones listed, uh, they're not listed anymore in this one. Usually I list the types of scaling that we can get in there fit, full, and outside. If it's anything but that, then that means it's a tag ID. Okay, and we're targeting the tag called drag example. So that means that we're going to fit this frame into the tag drag example. Now, the other parameter that is being passed here is drag canvas. We're saying, please make the canvas ID of this to be drag canvas. To tell you the truth, at the time of doing the, the Zim site, the Zim Try site, I, I had a little bit of a glitch going on in Zim frame. If there were two frames, both frames would default to a canvas name of my canvas. And by having two tags called my canvas, that's not allowed. Okay, you don't want to have two IDs the same in in HTML. 
So since then, though, I've launched another, like a, a new version of Zim, which 3.03, which if we did not specify the canvas ID, by default, if you specify a tag there, it will name the canvas ID, whatever your tag is, with canvas put on the end. Okay, so now it no longer defaults automatically to my canvas. It defaults to whatever tag ID you put there, followed by the word canvas. So we no longer would really need to pass in the second parameter of the canvas ID. We could make those those frames work together just by default. They'll work fine. Okay, but at, at the time of uh, creating this example, I hadn't done that. So I found that I needed to pass in a canvas ID so that those two IDs did not overwrite one another. Okay, now note that uh, regardless of what we were doing there, we are using a slightly different format than I've shown you for the previous frames. I did, by the way, a Zim capture about the frame. So if you haven't seen that, you should go uh, take a look at that capture on frame. Um, normally we would make a new frame like that and just pass in a parameter. So there is us passing in the name of the tag. And like I said, that would be fine now, but at the time I needed to pass in the second parameter. This second parameter is quite the ways down in the parameter listing. So there's, I think there's six or seven parameters in ZimFrame. So we would have had to go drag example, comma, null, comma, null, comma, null, etc. And that's a bit annoying. And then finally work our way. And then for whatever, I think it's the very last parameter we get to, we pass in drag canvas. So as of Zim2, that's Zim Duo, we can do it this way, regular parameters, or we can pass in um, an initialization object. Right? So and when we pass in the initialization object, we well it's an object, so there's the squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, that's the object literal. And then we have to put the, the parameter names, scaling, and then the value, comma, whatever parameter we want to get to, in this case, canvas ID, and then the, the value. So we would find in the Zim docs, we would find out what these parameter names are. And we can just ignore all these things in the middle. Okay, so that's a little bit about Zim Duo. So, Regardless, uh, in this case, uh, you know, at any time we are welcome to specify the canvas ID if we so desire. And we have in this case, and it's called uh, drag canvas. So up above here, there's drag canvas uh, that we're using to style the, the canvas so that it's got the blue background. Okay. We've already gone through the frame as mentioned, so I'm not gonna, the rest of this has sort of already been done. We're, we've got our frame. Uh, usually I, I call that frame. In this case, I had two frames. One was already called frame. You do not wanna make your second frame called the same as your first frame. Okay, so maybe what might have been good is, is just frame two would have been fine here and then continue to call it frame two. I just dropped it in, on, the, on the site. I just dropped it to an F. The okay. reason why you don't want to call them the same name is usually both of these frames would be just sitting out in your JavaScript. In other words, they're in the same scope. And the second frame would then overwrite the first frame. And then things happen in the frame asynchronously. For instance, it may be that later on you want to load some more content into your first frame. Well, if they're both called frame, you're stuck. Uh, you would then end up loading content into your second frame rather than your first frame. So you should really call your frames, if you have more than one frame, you should call them different different uh, variables. Okay, so anyway, we've got var f in this case. So when our frame is ready, we run this function and we grab the stage for that frame and the width and the height for that frame. In this case, I've stored the width and the height in in SW and SH. In previous examples, I had stored them in stage W and stage height. That's what the template says. Usually when I code, I code with just SW and SH. They're shorter. And that's my traditional stage width and stage height variables. Okay. Assets, we looked at assets in the last Zim capture, so I won't go over those too much either. We're, we're loading the assets. We have three faces to load, 
and one background uh, or one uh, what do you call that the logo background okay and these are all in the try folder so we load the assets and when they're complete we run this function now these assets are pretty small so we don't really worry about uh, a progress bar what I might have done if they were a little bit bigger and taking time I probably would have added a waiter so that looks like this var waiter equals a new zim dot waiter and you can pass in parameters to sort of make that waiter look different thing this is just like a little thing like a doodah that's going to loop to loop to loop and, and waiting for content to load you would then show it so waiter dot show at this point because we've loaded the assets and now we're waiting and when it's complete we would say waiter dot hide okay and that's a nice quick way to sort of show indicate that hey we're waiting for something and then off it goes okay but we won't use that all right so when our content is complete uh, did I talk to you? I think I did, didn't I? I talked to you about... Yes, I did. I talked about that. Um, when our content is complete, we run a function that's here that starts to take our assets. But just before we look at all what's happening in the complete, let's go down to the bottom of our code. Wee! Big scroll. And just see how, how this is all ending up here. Okay, so there's the end of our window.load, here's the end of our frame being ready, and here's the end of our assets loading. Okay, uh, like that. And so all our content is going inside of the assets loading in this case, which is inside of the frame being ready, which is inside of the window being loaded so that we can access that tag. All right, good. Now we're ready to look at the code. All right, okay. So when the load is complete, we can get our assets by saying, hey, give me the uh, frames asset called face1.png, and that matches whatever's up here. Okay, and I'm putting that in a variable called face1, face2, face3, and the logo variables called that. Okay, and so now we have our assets. Those are all bitmaps that have come back, create JS bitmaps. It looks like we're about to talk about registration points, but we've already talked about registration points in the capture that dealt with the shapes. So if you haven't, if you don't know about registration points, you're welcome to go back and have a listen through that one. So zim dot center reg logo on the stage. Great, we're putting the logo centered on the stage, and we're also setting the alpha of the logo. All this comment is about properties. You may not know what properties are if you need to read it you're welcome to so one of the reasons why we have this example is for the beginner who you know doesn't know much about all this so it's heavily commented and you can check out what a property is and start to use it that's great so the reason why we've set the alpha to 0 0.8 that means it's a little bit transparent is so that the logo in the back there behind the picture uh, behind the face that logo fades in a little bit with the background sky I found it was just kind of sitting up too close and I want this to sort of imagine it being in the sky so I just uh, dropped the, the opacity of it so that it blended a little bit more with the sky now uh, here comes the art of this installation in a sense and that is we want to drag around a head and the head changes faces so rather than try and drag around the face and then swap the face as I'm dragging it that that's almost impossible to do because you're trying to drag something and then swap what you're dragging you, you don't do it that way instead you put the faces inside a head a single object the head and then you drag the head okay and then you can drag the head all you want and anytime swap the faces that are inside it without affecting your drag without changing or adjusting your drag and there's a little trick to do that and that's why I use this as an example this is an example of those little tricks that happen as we're building interactive media and the more you build the the better you get at these and these have been tricks that I've been using all the way from Macromedia Director back in 1995 and then into Flash 
in the uh, 2000s and all the way up to now in our JavaScript, in our CreateJS, we've got these tricks. So, first of all, we make a container. And here we are making a new CreateJS container. A container is a display object that just holds other, other things. So we can hold many things in, in a container. And indeed, much of Zim uh, is containers. So all of the components and the shapes, they're all containers. All right, so we're storing that in a var called head. So our head is a container. And here we are taking the head and adding the first face, face one. So this is face one bitmap. And now we're centering the head inside. Oh, sorry, we're taking the head. We're centering the head on the stage. So now the head is also centered on the stage. Now, if we didn't center that to the, the stage. Center reg, by the way, if we center it to something, adds it to that. So we also have an add child, like a stage.add child. The head, it's part of the center reg. It's also part of the Zim center. So if we don't do that, if we don't add it, then we come back and take a look at our code, refresh. The head does not get added. There's the logo, but the head doesn't get added. If we do the Zim center reg, it centers the registration point of the head. You can, like I said, view the Zim capture on shapes. That's a couple captures ago, and you'll learn about registration points. And then uh, we're putting that on the stage, so great. Now if I save that and we refresh here, now the head is showing up. The head is also draggable, and once again, just to, we're about to go into this part. As I pick it up, if it's still touching the Zim logo, then it's happy still. But as soon as it goes away, oh, it gets sad. And when I let go, it goes wobbly, like a wobble mouth. And eventually, once I let go, it, it goes happy again now that it's nested on the Zim logo. OK, so let's move in to see how we did that. Dragging. Now, we haven't looked at dragging specifically yet. I think I showed you quickly a Zim drag. We just say Zim.drag, and then what we want to drag. But as it says, through here, there is a technique. Imagine that we had a puzzle, and the puzzle has a bunch of pieces. We could put a zim drag on every single piece. Zim.drag piece one, zim.drag piece two, but that becomes a bit annoying. So instead, zim drag by default works that if you put it on the container, zim.drag puzzle that contains all these pieces, Zim will automatically drag whatever you pressed on inside the puzzle. Okay, so if you pressed on inside the puzzle, you pressed on piece three, it will start dragging piece three. Okay, now are you sort of seeing what might happen here? Remember we had a head and then we add child face one. So if we say zim.drag head, like, uh, like this, which we're about to do, zim.drag and round bracket head. Uh, that's great, except it's not really going to drag the head, which is the container. It's going to end up dragging the face that is sitting inside the head. Okay, that could lead us to problems. In this case, we really want to drag the head, not the specific face inside. In the case of the puzzle, in the case of the puzzle with all the pieces, we do want to drag the pieces and not the outer container of the puzzle, because if we did that, all of the pieces would drag together, which we don't want. So uh, by default, it's very powerful and handy to be able to say, just drag one thing and then have it drag any of the parts inside. But in this case, we don't want to do that. So um, we have a way around that. It's a traditional way. Once again, this has been around for quite some time, certainly back in Flash and, and in Director since the 90s. And now it has moved into JavaScript. Thank you very much for CreateJS for bringing this here. This is one of the things that is needed to make interactive media that traditional HTML does not have. And that is a mouse children setting. What this is saying is ignore any of the children inside of me. Do not make them, uh, do not make the mouse operate on them. Okay, so we can say we'll, we'll ignore anything inside head. That means the face is it's like it's not there. And when we say zim dot drag head, we'll drag only the head. Great. Okay, so now dragging's working, but now we've got to talk about how to change these faces. 
So some of this I didn't think of right here and right now. This code has been reorganized a little bit, or organized, I guess you could call it. Uh, but oh, what I want to do is I want to store what face are we currently holding. And so I've just made a variable called last face. And we'll see down below why we, why we need this. Okay. So currently we put face one sitting in, inside the head and therefore the last face is face one. Okay. Whenever we want to remember something, and you may not sort of understand why we want to remember this, but uh, just take it on faith for now. When we want to remember something, we put it in a variable. So we use a variable to store some information that we want to remember. All right. Now we've got this function called show face, and we're going to call this function in a variety of different places as we drag. And show face is just um, what I found is when I built this, I didn't have a show face or a show, sorry, a show function initially. I didn't have it, but I found myself repeating the code to show a face over and over in, in, in at least three different uh, ways. And so I kind of said to myself, wait a minute, rather than repeating this code, I will put this code in a function because I'm doing the same thing each time. It's just slightly different. It, it just same thing, but different face. <laughs> Okay, so th that's when you would make a function. A function is code that you want to run over and over again at different times, okay? Um, and you, rather than repeat it, you uh, can put it in one place. So, first of all, here's a, a good, uh, you know, uh, this is why we needed the last face. If I say, hey, show this face, and that's the face that was already showing, I don't want to add that face again and update the stage again. All right, certainly depending on how many times that might happen, that could cause just a bit of delay or a little bit of processing power or waste of battery if I'm updating the same face that, that you know, is already there. So uh, this is probably why I needed to record what face was my last face. So if I'm trying to show a face that comes in here as a parameter, all right, if that face that I'm trying to show is equal to the last face, that means I'm already showing it. So I don't even go any further. I return. Return means leave this function. All right, so there's no point in updating the face if the face is already the face that's showing. Okay, now that we know the face is different, we're going to store the new face that we're going to be using. So we will be changing the face to this face right here. And now we say, hey, the last face, or well, sort of like our current face, is face. So that the next time this runs, it's been updated. And if we change the face, we want to make sure that we also change the last face uh, variable, okay, and then the value in it. Now, this is just a fast way to handle removing whatever face was there. There is also, uh, we could have said in our head, please remove child whatever the last face is. Oh, we would have to put this right up here before we set the last face, right? Before we set the last face, we could say head dot remove child, whatever the last face was. And that would remove the last face object from the head. Okay, so that would have been fine. And uh, we made a comment saying that ah, would have been fine. Uh, another simple way is just, hey, there's only going to be one head at a time in, or sorry, there's only going to be one face at a time inside the head. Hopefully I, haven't, hopefully I haven't been getting those mixed up all this time. Anyway, there's only one face in the head. So if we just remove all children, that will certainly remove the right face. And that's kind of what, you know, we don't even have to think about it. Just get rid of the stuff in there. All right, get rid of the stuff in there in the head and then add the new face. So this face is whatever face we're saying in the parameter that we want to show. So we're passing in either phase one, phase two, phase three into there. And phase one, phase two, phase three will be face. And we add it to the head. Okay. Now, if we make a change, create.js requires a stage.update. So we will update the stage at that time too when the face changes. Now, that's great. We've got this function that allows us to change the face. Let's see how we know when we're going to change the face. Okay. So, 
we need to do that while the head is dragging. If we go back out to the, the example here, I'm dragging. I'm currently dragging the head. As I'm dragging, I need to be checking to find out if it's hitting that in the background. And as soon as it's not hitting that thing in the background, the logo, then I'm going to change the face. We also need to change the face when I let go. So when I let go, that's a mouse up uh, or a press up. When I let go, I change the face. Not only that, at some other time, uh, to sort of be determined, at some other time, I'm changing the face when it goes back to rest there. But let's just take a look at the one where I pick it up and I'm dragging. How do we know when I'm dragging to change that face? Okay, so when we are on press move, so I press down and I move, that's a CreateJS specific uh, event, press move, and I like it. There's other ones like mouse move and, and that in back in traditional HTML, but press move is how CreateJS handles that. So on our head, when we've pressed down on it and we're moving it, we're going to do a hit test. Now we've mentioned hit test before, but in this case we're doing a hit test circle. So we're finding out when the logo, which is not the circle, is hitting the head of the circle. So if you want to know about hit tests, you would go out to the documentation. Uh, shall we go there? I'll make a new window here. We'll go to Zim and we will press on Docs and take a look at the hit tests. So here they are, hit test circle. Let's have a read. See if shape A, so that's the first parameter, is hitting points on a circle and the circle is based on the position, registration, and bounds of object B. So what it does is it takes the, the bounds of object B, which is if you're wanting to hit test a circle, it would help if it's a, you know the bounds are a square. Uh, but it will actually make an oval. I think it will make an oval on something that's not square. But anyway, uh, it makes a, a circle based on the bounds of that. Okay, you can also specify as a final parameter there. By default, it puts eight points around the circle. So if you think about it, uh, let's go back to our circle. Eight points would be one point at the top, one point at the bottom, the right and the left. That's four points. And then other points at the 45 degrees, etc. Okay, so any of those any of those points, see, watch, I hit a point there, uh, it's happy, I guess what's happening is, uh, yeah, let's see, the edge works fine, and, yeah, uh, on the corner works fine, so uh, that's probably good enough, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to notice, right, yet, if this were other types of hit tests, you would start to notice, I, I'd be hitting right now, so if I'm sitting here, I'd be happy, Okay, and I don't want to be happy when I'm here. I want to be happy when I'm there. And that takes a hit test circle to be able to do that. Okay, and because one of these things is a circle, that's the best way uh, to handle the hit test. All right, so this will either return true or false if the logo is hitting the circle of the head. Okay, if it's true, then we show face one. That's the happy face. If it's false, then we show face three. Now, do you see why we've got a bit of an issue here? Imagine, as I'm dragging, this press move is going very fast. Uh, 30, 60 times a second, who knows, 30, 60, 30 or 60 times a second, depending on whether you're mobile or local by default. Okay, and so uh, 60 times a second, we're testing this to see if it's hitting. Now, if I didn't put in, like, in each time we're testing, we're, we're either running one or the other. Okay, now imagine that I didn't put this um, this check in here to find out if the face is equal to the last face. Basically what that would be doing is it would keep on removing all the children in the, in the head, adding the face, and updating the stage 30 times a second or 60 times a second. So we don't really want to do that, and that's what that uh, test was in there. That's another good example of making interactive media. We do things like that all the time. It's not in any documentation. That's logic. Okay, I think I meant to say for their FOR. But that's that's logic and check variables. That's called a check variable, for instance. Check variable is, um, is a way that we handle certain logical aspects that aren't really part of the documentation or the language. 
Okay, it's part of you know the logic of building, and uh, this example shows why or how that's being done. Okay, so if it's not hitting, show the sad face. If it is hitting, show the happy face. Great. So that handles the dragging. How do we handle the animation when we press up? So here is another CreateJS event called press up. So when we press up, I'm showing face two. That's the warbly face, no matter where, because this is going to animate back to the beginning. Um, and now we're going to animate. So here's another good good reason why we've shown showing this example because we've got animation going. Woohoo! So uh, animating we can use Zim Move. Zim Move helps you move something easily and where we're moving to is the stage width divided by two and the stage height divided by two. That in a sense is why we center regged rather than just use Zim Center. Zim Center we would not really know unless we did a small calculation where to move this to. But if we center the registration point of everything, it really makes it easy to move it back into position because we know that it's just half the stage width. Uh, you know, rather than half the stage width minus, or is it plus the width, half the width? No, it'd be minus, minus half the width of the object, you know. So rather than do that small calculation, we're just keeping it center or keeping it easy by centering the registration points of everything. Okay. So we're moving the head. By the way, Zim Move, I mentioned it before, both Zim Move and Zim Animate, they wrap the, the CreateJS tweenJS. So it's really CreateJS that's doing all the hard work here with their fantastic tweenJS. Now, mind you, those are based on equations that you know Robert Penner did back in, in Flash, which are probably based on mathematical equations. So certainly many people have done all the work to get tweens going. But um, uh, this hopefully makes it quite simple for us. And this will create, by the way, it will create a, um, a ticker if we need a ticker and stuff like that. So it handles all that kind of stuff. We're going to do our animation. And we're going to take that long. So that's just under two seconds. Now note how specific that is. It's not two seconds. I didn't leave it at two seconds. This was testing. I, you know, you can, you can get right into this and kind of say, no, two seconds is too long. So that would be 2000 milliseconds. Uh, 1,500 seconds is too short a time. And so I ended up sort of balancing this to 1,800 is what I wanted. And the type of ease is elastic out. So it starts off easing normally, and then it does an elastic at the end. Do you like that look? So watch as I drop it. It heads initially a nor normally. I'm sort of letting go and it goes right there, but then it goes wow, 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 and does an elastic over the top. Now, one thing is this, it's going to be happy when it lands there, but watch when it goes happy, happy, but it is not finished. There's a few little elastics right at the end there, and it's happy before it finishes. All right. It would have been easier to be happy when the animation finishes. But I didn't like it. It just looked like it was taking too long to be happy again. So I sort of said, all right, well, there's, you know, that's uh, just a little fix, a little tweak that I'm going to have to do manually. So let me show you how we could have made it happy when it ended. First of all, one of the parameters, I believe it might be the next parameter, is what function to call when the animation is finished. Let's go, let's go see that. This is available in Zim. It's also available in the CreateJS. So we want to look up not the hit test, but the move, for instance, here, and check the parameter. So the time it takes, oh, the type of ease. Yes, that was uh, elastic. And then what, what function to call. OK, so that's the call function. And it says information about the call function down below here. We could also specify parameters to send to the call function. OK, so the, the next one we might say finish or something like that. Hopefully that's how you spell finish. And then we could say function. Uh, I shouldn't really specify that inside here. Does it matter? Yeah, we're, if we're, we're already in. Um, one of these press up functions. I might want to specify this function outside of, of this function. Otherwise, I keep on making the function over and over again when I don't really need to. 
So we're going to call the function finish. And then just down below here, we'll make our function finish. Uh, and like so. So at this time, when we finish, um, by the way, this last line here is how I'm currently handling this. So I better comment this out. So let's just run it. So this is the, we haven't looked at this yet, but that's how I've decided to put the face back to face one. But let's comment that out for a second. We won't really do anything in finish at the moment. And let's just see what happens when we run this. So I refresh now. I pick up the face and I let go. It's wobbly, 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 and it stays wobbly. Okay, so that's what we're trying to correct now. We've changed when we let go, it goes to wobbly. Did we see that right here? When we press up, that's letting go, it changes to wobbly or warbly, as I say here. Then we're moving it. Now we're calling a finish. So let's in the finish, let's show face one. So I'm just going to copy that. And we better update the stage as well. Stage dot update. Or did I put an update stage? I think I put the update stage right in the show face. Yeah, so I did. So that's fine. Let's confirm that. Here's the show face. Show face. At the bottom, if the face is changing, stage.update. So that's good. All right, so down below here, when our move is finished, we call finish. Here's the function finish and we're going to show face one. And in showing the face, it will update the stage. Now let's see what happens. Refresh. And we pick it up and let go. There it goes, warbly, warbly, warbly. Finally, it goes happy. So did you see that? But look at how long it's kind of touching the, the, the Zim logo. It's touching it for a long time. I want it to be happy sooner than that very last uh, elastic. Okay, so what's happening is the elastic is getting smaller and smaller, and then finally it's going happy. It's calling that function. But this is quite common that we will call a function when an animation finishes. It's just this time I needed it earlier. So uh, I'm just going to delete that stuff. Okay, not call the finish. What I decided to do, the other thing I might have gotten away with is anytime it's touching, regardless of whether I'm dragging or not, anytime it's touching, I could have made it happy. But I didn't like that either because then um, when I let go, it was happy, 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 but yet it was still moving back and forth. So this was a case where you just can't win. I can't do this automatically, so I'm going to have to manually put something in based on the time uh, to make that um, go happy when I want it. So I added a, a traditional JavaScript set timeout we call the function literal after 900 milliseconds. So partway through the animation, turned out halfway through the animation, I'm going to show face one. Okay, so now that that's back in, we'll save that, we'll refresh here. Refresh, I pick it up, I let go, warbly, 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 halfway through, it goes happy again, because by that time it's settled. Okay, and that's how I want it. So I really tweak that and put in a specific sort of manual override on the system to become happy again after a certain amount of time. All right, that, we'll leave it at that. That's the end of it. Oh, well, there's a little bit more and that's just resizing. So because this tag changes the, the location, we need to use Zim frame to capture the resize on it. If we did not, we would uh, comment out all these, for instance, and save that. Uh, my refresh here uh, looks great, works fine, but if I change it and, well, I, I mean, I suppose it still works based on the original size, but no longer is this centered in there. And because this was in the example, it was constantly like people might have been changing this uh, column. They, they might have changed it to that and you can't even see the head. So we need to resize this and to resize it, I'm just going to do these. Uh, each time we resize, we can find the new frame width and the new frame height and set our variables to those. And then we can set the X of the logo and the head to half the stage width. So there we are just putting that back into the middle and making sure that we update the stage after that. Is that clear? Okay, and then that's pretty well the end of it. So thank you very much. 
Uh, I am Inventor Dan Zen. That was a Zim Capture taking us through the example that is on the website. Now it's a it's a relatively in-depth example with a few tricks that, that commonly come up in interactive media. If you'd like to see more of those types of tricks, but sort of on a more specific scale, that's what Zim bits are. And one of the recent captures took you through Zim bits. Zim bits is another way to see a whole bunch of those little tricks, like currently in the 30 number numbering 30. Okay, uh, have a great day. Ciao.